Hi, I'm Jeff Morrow with Sierra Analytics, and I'm here with the first in our series of Featured Features, where we present a single feature of HD Examiner in depth. Today's featured feature is Manual Overrides. As you probably already know, you can override the retention time range that HD Examiner uses for any individual result, but there's a few things that you might not already know, and uh, this video will talk about those. So first I'm gonna show you all the ways that you can actually do a manual override. So these triangles show you the retention time range that HD Examiner is currently using for this result. Now for those of you who used HD Examiner 1.0, you may remember that back in those days, dragging these little red triangles around was the only way that you could do a manual override. Um, later on, we added a feature where you could control drag to move them both at the same time. However, both of those are, are not the way you should actually do it. The way you should actually do a manual override is to just right drag over the range you want. So you'll notice that when I did a manual override, uh, HD Examiner automatically recalculated the result. Well, suppose you don't want that. Suppose you want to see your sum spectrum first and then decide what to do. Well, you can do that. So if you go under here to Tools, Options, Manual Overrides, you'll see there's a checkbox here for Show Spectrum Before Calculating RT Override. If you check that and hit OK, now when you do a manual override, so I'll just right drag here, it first sums up the data and shows you a new spectrum in black. So now over here in the spectrum view, we actually have three traces. The red and the blue are the same as they were before. They are the actual and theoretical isotope clusters for my previously calculated result. The new black trace is uh, the new summed spectrum that uh, it will try to calculate if we tell it to. So you'll notice up here in the upper right, there are two options, calculate and revert. Calculate means I like this data, try calculating with it. Revert means no, that's no good, throw this away and keep my old result. Now, if you look closely at this data, you'll see that the cluster that we care about here is actually much smaller in this uh, new spectrum. And this interfering cluster off to the right is actually much bigger in the new spectrum. So we really don't want this, this uh, retention time range because the, the cluster we actually care about is much smaller relative to its interfering neighbors. So in this case, I'm gonna just revert and keep uh, what I had before. Now this particular result is actually really good for demonstrating another feature that's related to manual overrides. If we zoom in and, and uh, look closely here, uh, you can see that HD Examiner isn't quite using the entire chromatographic peak. And your first reaction might be, well, that's wrong, but watch what happens when we actually extend it a bit to use more of the peak. If you look at the black traces here, you'll notice that these interfering clusters to the left and right of the cluster we actually want here are, are bigger. And so this one off to the right gets a little bigger and this one to the left gets much, much bigger. Um, the more noise we have interfering with our actual signal, the worse our result will be. So in this case, we actually don't want the entire chromatographic peak. Uh, and, and what HD Examiner found was actually pretty good. So if you see HD Examiner only using part of a peak, don't assume that it's making a mistake. It might be making a mistake, but it might also be helping you get the cleanest result that it can get. And actually the algorithm that the software uses to do this can be disabled in the settings, but that's a topic for another video. So retention time manual overrides aren't the only overrides you can do. For deuterated results, you can also override the M over Z range that the software uses to calculate the centroids. The main purpose of this is to tell HD Examiner to use a different cluster that's in your data. So remember that a, a peptide's deuterated cluster can actually look very different and be in a very different M over Z range depending on exactly how deuterated it is. So if HD Examiner sees two clusters very close together that could each potentially be a deuterated version of the peptide that it's looking for, it will occasionally pick the wrong one. And with an M over Z manual override, you can correct that. So here's an example. 
So if we look here at this 40 second result, there's a, there's a pretty good cluster out here to the right, but for some reason HD Examiner is picking this uh, smaller thing that actually doesn't match very well and gives us a low confidence result. We can look at its neighbors, the 10 second and 180 second results, and see that, yeah, this cluster to the right probably is the one that we are looking for. And so what we can do here is right drag over the M over Z range that we want. I'm actually going to drag a little bit past it as well. And what we're doing here is we're telling HD Examiner, no, 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 this cluster that you picked isn't right. You should use this cluster to the right instead. And when we do, it recalculates and it brings up this result. And now we have a high confidence match. It looks pretty clean and it, it matches its neighbors. It's using this cluster in the 850 to 854 sort of a range. So this one makes a lot more sense. So to recap, there are four takeaways that I hope you got from this video. Number one, right drag to do your manual overrides. Don't bother trying to move the little triangles. Number two, if you wanna see your override spectrum before calculating, you can by going into Tools, Options, Manual Overrides, and setting that checkbox. Number three, if HD Examiner uses only part of a chromatographic peak, that isn't necessarily wrong. And number four, M over Z manual overrides let you point HD Examiner to a deuterated cluster that makes more sense than the one that it chose by default. Remember, if you have any questions about any of this, you can contact us at support at hdexaminer.com. And once again, this is Jeff Morrow from Sierra Analytics. Thanks for watching.